Peaks won their last home game against Norfolk State. We're neck and neck with Georgetown on Sunday before the Hoyas closed the game strong to ultimately win by 16. But here we go. A holiday hoops doubleheader from the Joel Coliseum. Wake in the white. Marshall in the black. And Malaya Coles with her first touch looking back door. Alexandria Scruggs perhaps playing the best basketball of her entire five-year career these past couple of weeks. No question about it. Three games in double figures. She's doing a great job on the boards, rebounding, and just making solid plays. Tempo is going to be very important. Wake Forest able to get what they want, got the back door layup, and then a good defensive stop. Elise Williams ahead for Reagan Conley, who's in the starting lineup for the fourth straight game. And Alexandria Scruggs missing the point blank shot, but she was fouled by Sydney Scott. Clear look at the game plan for the Deeks early, getting it inside the Scruggs. Well, you get inside, you try to get some easy baskets, but it's got to be a tempo type thing. Run the clock down. Don't get in a run game with this Marshall team. They'll try to put pressure, but that's a good first two possessions. Today, the 129th game of Alexandria Scruggs' Lake Forest career. She will tie the school record for most games played on New Year's Eve when the Deeks travel to Florida State. Lakevia Boykin currently sitting with 130 games played. Free throws have long been Alex's bugaboo. She missed them both there. He yeah, only shooting about 51% from the line. How will you defend this Marshall team? They come out and they trap in the corner, force a quick shot by, by Matthews. Coles misses the pair of free throws. Good to see Elise Williams back. She missed the one game against Norfolk State. Deeks played pretty well without her. Elise back in the lineup against Georgetown. She had seven rebounds, five assists, but struggled offensively. Going just one for 10 with six turnovers. You can see that Wake Forest in their controlled tempo offense bringing everybody up and trying to look for back cuts. And that time, first time you got a basket out of it, this time not able to convert. But again, that's the idea I think you're going to see out of Wake Forest. Spread them out, try to attack high lows out of your back. Wake showing a little light pressure. Here's Abby Beeman, the transfer from Shepherd University. Closing in on 2,000 points in her career between her D2 time and now Marshall, the D1 level. Good defense from Wake Forest. Conley comes up with a loose ball. Expect to see a lot of full court pressure from Marshall. They force a lot of turnovers, but they also, uh, they also surrender a bunch of good looks. Well, that's part of, it's a good news, bad news thing for you. But they, they will pressure you. They forced 112 turnovers, Evan, in their last four basketball games. So, yeah, they're coming at you. You've got to be strong with the ball. you got to know where you're going with it when you get it and make plays like that. Alea Cole is able to scoop it up and in, and the Deeks have a 4-0 lead. And what you like about this Wake Forest team right there, they got back on defense after the layup, and they're controlling tempo. Matthews to the corner. Three ball won't go. Sidney Scott off the mark. It'll stay Marshall ball, and we've got wholesale substitution for the Thundering Herd. Spacing, there's the rub, pick and roll action, but you go to the second player, nice job of getting the inside, and then Cole's doing what she does well in the paint, finishing strong. 5 new players on the floor for Marshall, and the Herd are still scoreless. How Kim Caldwell plays, shuttling her players in and out. She plays a lot of different bodies. You've got a lot of different players that are capable of scoring. Yeah, they try to wear you down, get you in foul trouble, force mistakes. Another foul by Marshall. It's on the floor, and it's on Aislinn Hayes. Hayes has been hot lately, 15 points a game in her last seven. Rebound pulled down there by Brianna Campbell. Campbell, very good off the bounce. Hayes, you just talked about scoring the basketball well, has a good mid-range game. Tudor was online, but way off deep. Foul going on Aislinn Hayes. It's her second personal and just not even a minute in the game. So she's back to the bench. Depth is not an issue, though, with this Marshall no, team. No, it's not. Beeman intercepts the long ball. 
This is Mayer. And now Campbell driving on Conley. Pretty good defense from Ray Very Conley. Good. Very good defensive set so far by the Dukes. Beeman. Cross court. Shot clock at five, and Campbell missed the point blank shot after a beautiful drive navigating through the traffic. And it's a reach in foul on Ashley Tudor. It's the fourth Marshall team foul in the opening three and a half minutes. Wow. Couldn't have got a better look for Marshall that time. Had a, a nice look a moment ago on the jumper. And, and Wake's doing a nice job of contesting and so far playing without fouling. There's your trap. The two guard front, two, two, one, one, two, one, one. There's your, there's your problem. That's the pass that Marshall tries to create and Tudor gets the herd on the board in transition. And it doesn't take this Marshall a long time to go from defense to offense to score to back the defense. As a former coach, Stan, I mean, when you see a team pressing nonstop, does, does that make you edgy? Does that make you feel confident that you can beat it? What do you think? It makes me edgy because I hope my team is mentally strong because they're going to get different looks. They're going to try to wear you down. So offensive foul, I think, on Scruggs. And you can't make those mental mistakes. Again, 2-2-1 two, two, pressure, the long cross-court pass you're not able uh, going to make, but you got to come and meet that pass, too. And then quickly you steal, and immediately you score, and they press you. Yeah, there's a lot of things. It's not so much all the action all the time because you can put people in places to combat that, but it's the mental fatigue. It wears you down. I mean, you know, there's an uh, unforced terror right there. Marshall substituting like a hockey team early in this <laughs> really? game. A trap. They have to wait for the whistle, but other than that, it's just like ice hockey. And there's a tie game, back-to-back -back layups as Scott puts it in. See, this is almost what Marshall sees every day in practice. And that backside pass, you've got to be smart with that. See, there's the pressure, see? Harrison beats the pressure, missed it short. Williams had her hands on the rebounds, but couldn't control it, and the foul is going against Kaya Harrison. Evan, you, you hit it on the nail. I mean, you know, because all right, you get a basket, you press, you press down the side, you try to take the quick shot, you don't get it, and then you try to get the rebound, so what's happened? Harrison picks up a cheap foul, and that's part of the plan of the Marshall basketball team. Wear you down in so many ways. They've got the depth, they'll do that. Well, because Marshall can withstand exactly. one of their key players being in foul trouble. Wake Forest needs Kaya Harrison on that's the floor. A, and that's a cheap foul for Kaya Harrison. She needs all her fouls. Six in a row now for the herd. Beeman's first two from the teardrop. And the moment you're able to make a basket, you see the pressure. And, they, and here you go. You've got to react to it. They're forcing 25 turnovers a game. They've forced 30, or they've had 30 steals in a game twice this year, which is really insane. <laughs> exactly. You've got six players further that they have got 10 steals or more. Might have been one there. Kick out. Jordan splashes in the three. Madison Jordan knocking it down. The second leading three-point shooter, or actually the leading three-point shooter on this Wake Forest team. She could have a good game tonight. I'll tell you why in just a second. Finishes play out. Sydney Scott straight away gets the friendly roll and the quick answer from the herd to retake the lead. Madison Jordan's young. She's a freshman. She's new. All this stuff is going on. She doesn't phase her. She doesn't have time to think. If she just plays and not react, she could have a solid scoring game. Two seconds. You need possession in the front court. The ball crossed midcourt but wasn't possessed with a long pass. Madison Jordan knocks down the quick three off the bench. Entertaining start, frenetic pace. That's what you get with a thundering herd in town. Six and four Marshall team with an early 9-7 lead on the road. You see the numbers so far this year, averaging close to 90 points per ball game. Number one in the Sun Belt points, threes made, turnover margin, and steals per game. Currently fourth in the nation in steals per game, Stan. They are an impressive outfit. Man, number 11 in the nation in scoring. And they just, they come at you in waves. And we've already seen that 
off to a slow start, but the last couple of possessions, you see what the Marshall basketball team is about. Good, good defense from Kaya Harrison, playing without giving a foul and getting the turnover. It, it, it's pretty astonishing to see what Kim Caldwell has done, the culture she has instituted in you know, 10 games. Well, you bring people in that fit your mindset, you get them to execute, execute at a high level, You've got some people that can run. You've got some defenders. You've got some scores. You put it all together and you get a belief that things work. And again, and this is where Wake has got to be smart. Poise with the basketball. Run your clock down. Now get into your offense and then score off those possessions. Harrison off one foot. Tough falling down rebound from Tudor. 11 different players have already seen action today for Marshall. Can't leave her there. Good look for Mays, and CC buries the three. She's only made four threes going into this afternoon's ball game, but she's an excellent spot shooter. Missed a season ago, but she can run. She's a defender. There's so many players. You're talking about how to put this team together. So many players that can, are interchangeable. They can play two, three, maybe even four positions for this Marshall team. Tudor just picked up her second foul, so Ace and Hayes and Tudor each with two apiece in the first quarter. Marshall, though, started 0 for 6. They're 5 for 5 cents on a 12-3 run. Tudor made the basket a moment ago. Now goes out of the game with her second. Matthews comes back in as one of the leading shot blockers in the conference. Again, very athletic. It's 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, six, and then again, this is the other thing. You've got to be able to make these free throws if you're Wake Forest. Allow yourself to get back and set your defense. Another question. I'm asking this from the perspective of a broadcaster to a coach. As a broadcaster, it's hard to keep track of who's in the game when Marshall subs them in so frequently. Yeah. As a player, as a coach, is that tough too? Yes, yeah, communication. It's, just like, it's, it's simple. It's communicate. But the great thing about your names on the back of the jerseys. Offensive so. foul. Call don't on know who they are. See if they take a look at this. Looks like Carla Fountain. Well, everyone from Marshall is going to the bench. Is that because they're going to look at it, or because just the wholesale substitutions are getting ready to come in? Both. All right, let's take a look at this. See, I think that's a basketball play. I think that's a basketball play. They'll look at it. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Thank you. Common foul on the floor. They're going to look to see if there's an upgrade. In women's basketball, there's no flagrant foul. Right. The, the term is intentional foul. And, you know, in some foul. ways, I think what we just saw was flagrant, break. but I don't certainly don't think it was intentional. Now, I don't know if intent matters. Now, and, you know, we were joking about it before the game about being able to, the styles of play and how the game has changed. And to me, that's just a, ba it was a basketball play. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think she tried to swing it. She tried to, she got doubled up. So she was trying to get the ball away from one player, and someone else happened to be there. I mean, it's just back in the day, that was this, all right, let's keep playing. <laughs> now, but I understand safety. Watch. And you could argue that she was fouled even before yeah, the contact exactly. happened with the elbow. Now, when she changes position of the ball to the right, there's a little bit of a, maybe she knew then, but, I, you know. I think that's I think that's just a basketball play, a common foul. We keep moving. And they have announced it is a common foul. Good. Joe Coliseum public address announcer Joe Christie lets everybody know. Joe's got a doubleheader today too. Yeah, he does. Joe, Joe's a busy man. Yes, he is. He's a busy man. Not tell his business, but he's a busy dude. <laughs> but then you are too, so I, you know, I am. I'm not complaining. It's good to be busy. It is. Into Campbell. Harrison didn't want to give the foul, and Campbell recognized as much and scored. Yeah, exactly. And Campbell can score in the paint like that at 5-5, five, five, and that was a nice matchup for her. She knew the defender couldn't do anything about it. Right now, you begin to see this game slipping away a little bit from Wake Forest. Pretty good look from Jordan. Couldn't knock it down, though. And then Scruggs unable to control the rebound. 
on the loose ball. It'll be Marshall's possession. Watch this go inside. Harrison's picked up the one foul early. So she just posed her up, just takes your time, takes your time. Not a lot the guy could do about it. And Campbell just turns and wheels and gets the basket. And the thing of it is, Wake Forest, you're so happy to beat pressure. And you have the numbers at some point in time that you you rushed your shot. You don't want it to be blocked from behind. All those things that go in your head in transition. And you missed a shot. You don't get it. Boom. Marshall on a little run. Campbell, jitterbug out there. Pivots, kicks, Sydney Scott straight away three. Marshall now two for five beyond the arc. Good look by Andrews. Let's see how quickly Marshall gets back on the D end. Everyone wearing black is quick. Now they run their system, flying around defensively. Jordan shoots and scores. There you go. Little roll action, go to the open spot, catch, turn, and score. Half of Wake Forest points, courtesy of Madison Jordan coming off the bench. She only scored three points, 13 minutes on Sunday in D.C. Campbell spinning, unable to get it to go. Rebound for Andrews. Got the numbers right now. If you're Wake, be smart. Five on four. Muhammad, Mahogany Matthews behind the play. Just getting into it now. Harrison had it stripped but recovers. Andrews fakes it and then has it stolen away. Pass ahead to Matthews. Oh, somehow Campbell in between two Deacon defenders comes up with it, kicks it. Redmond three is good. It was scattered. It was crazy. It was good, but it was their basketball. Redmond third three. Catch, turn, knock it down. Scattered, crazy, good is the slogan for Marshall <laughs> basketball. There you go. They were down four early. Marshall now leads by seven. Deacons, seven turnovers in the first quarter. We had two opportunities with the ball and paint. They scored on one of the three. There's the eighth turnover to contrast with eight field goal attempts for the Deeks. It was almost like early in the ball game, Marshall said, okay, show me what you got. I'll spot you a couple of baskets and boom, here we go. Tough matchup here. Campbell. A little shake and bake. Missed it left. Good defense by Jordan. Two seconds. Harrison flings it the length of the court, but that'll be the end of the opening 10 minutes. As you First quarter summary numerically on the left side of your screen, and the numbers tell a pretty good story. Marshall, a lot of different players. Started slow, came on strong, and forced a ton of turnovers. It scored nine points off the eight turnovers that they forced. Nine of the ten games Marshall's played, <laughs> they forced 15 turnovers or more. Don't know how that didn't go down. Iron unkind to the visiting thundering herd on the opening shot of the second quarter. Got to get it over. Williams just does the 21 on the shot clock. She's been really quiet today. I don't think she's even taking a shot at you. She's 0 for 1. Yeah. One rebound, no assists, no turnovers. Yeah, that's just good, no turnovers. But that, that's what Marshall Diamond got. That's a good look there. Yep. Bam. Right on cue. You beat the pressure. You've got to be strong with the ball. You take your time. There's going to be some gaps. Wick take the other way. Beeman second bucket. She can score a lot of different ways. Put up 26 against Northern Kentucky, had 24 the other day against Elon. A quick, streaky score, and he gets a lot off steals, but also in the half-court set. Williams, similar spot, different result. Scruggs fouled in pursuit of the rebound. Kevin, you know, other than layups, obviously, that little mid-range shot is gonna be available at different times versus this Marshall pressure. And you've got to be willing to take that shot, but more importantly, you've got to make the shot. Second foul on Sydney Scott. So that's three different members of the Thundering Herd with two fouls apiece. Marshall already has a win over a Power Five program this year. They beat Florida. Impressively also. Scruggs, too strong. 
Wake Forest ball. Great high low. Once again, what we just finished saying, you're going to get the ball in the air. You've got to be able to finish those plays. Scruggs is a little too strong inside five feet. Dable quickly into Conley who lays it in. First two of the day for Conley. Shot clock at 26 and Marshall already has it in the paint, but Mays denied by Andrews who then throws it away in the backcourt. Mays back outside to Campbell and the herd reset. Wow. Campbell beats Scruggs off the dribble. And that's the second personal foul on Alex Scruggs. You, you said it right. You don't have time to celebrate. You got to get back on defense. They push it down, not able to get the play. But then you steal, you get a score, you get an opportunity. And unfortunately, in all that that happened, Alex Scruggs just picked her second foul. It's like old school North Carolina men's basketball. They're down the floor after a made basket in yeah. seconds. And then once, once you score, they're pressuring you again. So you, you've been mentally tough today, and you've got to execute. All right, here's the pressure. First two free throw attempts of the game right there for Marshall. Wake hasn't helped himself in the line. Deeks are one for four. Very good, very good. Riley took care of the ball when she got it, looked up. A couple of dribbles got the trap to go to the middle, and now you're able to run your offense. That's nice. Diebel, Andrews, and there's a turnover. Tenth of the game for Wake. Campbell kicks it. Beeman passes up the three, gives it up to Campbell. Good unselfish basketball there from the herd. Three more Marshall substitutes are at the table, and there's a fourth ready to come in. Beeman, tough shot. Rebound pulled down by Coles. She's doubled in the backcourt, and a pushing foul on... Ashley Tudor, and that's number three. And the look on her face says she's probably not going to get to play again for the third yeah, quarter. That, that one meant something to her. She was just a step late, but that was a miss. Marshall doubles up the basketball and nearly got the steal. Very good. We talked about it a moment ago. I said Riley should have said Diebel. But she caught the ball, looked ahead. That's good. That's a great job. Williams all the way. Missed the point blank layup. That's two you got to get. Didn't know she wanted to lay it off the glass or put it off the front of the rim. Didn't either. Hayes, strong take. Side of the backboard, no good. Rebound pulled down by Conley. And she's tied up in the backcourt. Wake will keep it via the possession arrow. Basically, this is scramble. This is just nonstop. You know, yeah, it's just, you know, and you, you've got to be aware of your, your passes, who you throw the ball to, catching the ball. They've done a nice job on the first pass, the last couple of possessions of, of looking, don't turn your back to the basket, looking ahead, and then trying to attack the pressure. This is nice right now. Gable looking for Williams. And missed another one. Late whistles, the foul on the shot of the rebound. It's a very dangerous pass inside to Williams. Stayed in the air a little bit too long. But Williams was able to get it, but she's got to finish that. But fortunately for Wake Forest, missed shot, foul over the top. Non-shooting foul on Beeman. Elise Williams knocked down her first shot of the quarter, but has missed a couple great looks. He's passed a couple possessions. Coles traveled. Good physical interior defense from Mahogany Matthews. Well, Matthews is a very good shot blocker. Leads the Sun Belt in blocks with 18. Stayed on her feet. Made her make the move. It's going to be a spin. And then after she does it, holds her spot. Make you force a turnover. That is a back cut. Matthews hammered by Coles. And the first foul on Malaya Coles will send Matthews to the line. You mentioned her block shot prowess. It's 63 blocks last year in 31 ball games. Watch this. Penetrates, catch, and then attacks. And there's, there's contact either front and back. Yeah, take a pick. Yeah, you're 
talk about a player, you know, like Matthews, that, that makes you, as a perimeter player, you know you can gamble because you've got someone like that to protect the rim, in this case, to protect the paint on the backside. First two for Matthews, largest lead yet for the herd. Number 12. Okay, this, let me explain the rules of basketball. After a made basket, you can take the ball out, you can run the baseline. So she was stationary, so that pass, the angle was, was too, too wide, boom, you don't get that. You can run the baseline now. It's a designated throw in, then obviously you can. But these are the little things that, that this Marshall team or any team that pressures you and make you make mental mistakes. Beeman gets it inside, Matthews. Gets her own rebound. Back outside, Beeman. Turkoff the steal. Right off the Demon Deacon bench, the freshman makes an impact. Movement. Wake Forest has to get movement at You can't just be stationary. The passes are too long. There's no screening. There's no one moving to the ball or making a back cut. This is better, a little better. Coles on the dive, nice feed, and Malaya Coles lays it in, her second field goal. Well, eventually everybody came up high, free throw line extended, so it gives you an angle to make the back cut. Coles recognizes being overplayed, nice play. I don't know what this stat says to you, Stan, but Wake with seven field goals, seven assists. Watch this. See, everybody was up, and so she knew she had one-on-one, -on -one. the defender was on her backside, go to the glass. Seven, seven assists and seven turnovers? No, you seven said seven assists, assists, seven field goals. Seven Every field day goals. basket has been assisted. Well, that's, that's pretty good today. That's pretty darn good. But it also says you're not getting anything in your freewheeling offense and your transition defense. Mays to Matthews for Campbell. Contact went uncalled. Matthews flies in for another rebound. Second chance opportunity. This is where Marshall really makes you pay. And they're going to call that one on Williams. It looked like she would, I would love to see this one again. Because it looked like the offensive rebound attempt came sort of recklessly flying in from the baseline. Well, she was Maybe. going, this is like pass interference. She's making a play on the basketball. And you see that little right arm? Yeah. See that right arm? Back in there slightly. Yeah. First on the lease. Good defense there. Here come the Deeks the other way. Foul's going on, Marshall. We might have a bunch of free throws in the final half of this second quarter, Stan. It's 14 <laughs> fouls apiece with 4.58 to play. By Marshall's recent standard, this has been a relatively low-scoring half for the Thundering Herd. They're averaging 98 points per game over their past four. The program has scored 100 in a game 20 times in the history of the program. Three times it's happened this season. Yeah. <laughs> 121 against Point Park and 115 against Salem. And they were in a mid-scoring game. That's nice after the timeout. They were in a mid-scoring game against Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago, and then all of a sudden they erupted in the second half. So what you're saying is they may only have 23 now, but they could still get to 90 today? Yes, sir. Deeks back within five after the Coles bucket. Rebound controlled by Conley. And the foul going on May. That's going to be free throws at the other end. After the timeout, being able to score. High low, goes inside, great inside position. Kept the ball up and went right to the basket. A nice job by Coles. Eight baskets, eight assists. And Malia Coles, three for three so far today. She also has two assists. Well, she could have a lot of success in this ball game if this is a half-court game. It's a half-court game, and we can go inside to her and let her touch the ball. Conversely, if uh, if it's tempo, 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 and you make her run around and get off her spots, it's gonna be it's not gonna be as successful for her. And my Marshall understands that. Malaya Coles just 13 points in the deep last two games, six for ten from the floor in those two games combined. The more shots she gets better for Wake. The, yes, yes, yeah, no, I don't, I don't. 
but also the more touches she gets. Right. That's fair. You know, yeah. Because if she's getting shots, she needs to convert. Williams able to poke it away. This should be a backcourt violation. It is. I love the fact that when Wake Forest has been able to make this a half-court game, offensively and defensively, they've, they've, they've totally controlled that. And I mean, they're putting pressure on the ball, they're getting going on one shot, they're doing a nice shot rebounding. When this game becomes a 94-foot game, that's when the Deeks are having some trouble today. Wake shooting 50%, 8 of 16, yeah. but the the asterisk there is yeah. Marshall's 8 for 27 because the Deeks have 12 turnovers. Well, Marshall's going to get a lot of shots, so that you don't even worry about that. If you, I mean, they've only shot over 45% three times this year. You get it, the ball a picked number. by Matthews, just flings it ahead. Scott, out race to the basketball by Williams. Great hustle by Williams. And then Diebel slings it ahead for Turkoff. Conley in rhythm. Bang! Yes. That's nice. That's very nice. I told you a long time ago, probably the best form shooter in this basketball team is Conley. And since she had a chance to catch the ball, get her feet set, you felt like that was going to be money. Great play by Wake Forest. She's made at least one three in seven of her last eight games now. Sydney Scott unable to answer. Rebound taken by Marshall's Abby Beeman. Shot clock back to 20. Play without fouling if you wake for us. An 8 0 run for the Deeks since they were down by nine. Beautiful pass. Beeman to Williams. Make it Matthews inside. And this play was put, started a few seconds before that off the penetration. Matthews did a nice job pushing Williams off the post and relocating. So when there was a penetration, if she was stop, she kicks it away. She did that. Tough spot for Diebel to pick yeah. up her dribble, and yet it works out. Beeman deflects it for Turkoff, who takes it strong. And one. Crazy scamble finish. Right we go. Turnover, smart play, head up. Goes to the basket, gets to contact. Gets the basket by foul. That's a play that'll help Riley's confidence grow. That play and then the basket by Conley really lets you know that, hey, Wake Forest can make these open floor plays. And we are tied. Just our second tie. We were tied for all in the early going. Hayes driving on Williams. Mahogany Matthews, top of the key jumper, won't go. Offensive rebound, Hayes. That's a big play because it's the second foul on Elise Williams and Marshall has a chance for three. And Williams just missed time to jump, was pushed under the basket just about a step further than you want to. Watch this box out. She's there. It's a long rebound, great hands inside, and you're able to finish the play. A bad break for Williams, a good fortunate break for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And Alicia Hayes giving a, a jolt in the arm to this Marshall team. Two-time transfer, began her career at Notre Dame, then Mississippi State. She was one of those players that benefited from the temporary restraining yeah. order ruling that allowed two-time transfers to play immediately. And, and, and like I said, played at two different schools. There's another team camp. camp. The veteran player that, that really doesn't get a lot of time or hasn't gotten a lot of time. She'll get more as the season goes on joining her sister, but again, it's just like to just plug and play here, Marshall. Right? Plug it and play. Somebody else get in there and you make the play. And they're doing this, and Beeman's only got, what, four points, six points? Four. Four, yeah. This is a very important two minutes and 20 seconds. Primarily for Wake Forest to stay in there, just, you know, to don't get blown away, don't have a 10-point margin. Marshall can do that to you. But Marshall, they're just going to keep playing. Mays on the drive. Missed it long. Turkoff looking to run. Realizes that it's wise to slow it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Good decision. Get the basketball first. Conley orchestrating the offense with Elise Williams on the bench. And an offensive foul called on Malaya Coles battling for position inside. And that is her second personal. We don't see Conley initiate the offense a lot. 
But Cole's doing a nice job inside trying to get position. Watch it. See that hand? See the, see the right hand? Then the left hand. She hooked him right there. I didn't see much the there, left, man. The left. Yep. I she, saw the she left impeded, hand. She impeded her the arm. And they may be looking at this. Yeah, okay, they're fine. But yeah, that, that's where that's where the call came from. Those guards. That's why you got to keep your hands up and not bring your arms around. And she brought that left arm around, and that's, that's where the foul came from. I'm not arguing that call too much. Michaela Quimby seeing her first minutes of the game. Came in and gave him a little spurt the other day against Norfolk State. Well, great block by Conley from behind on Matthews. It'll stay with Marshall. Kim Caldwell sending in her, her size. Six-foot-tall Meredith Mayers back in. It was inside. That's a nice block. Wake Forest only has 21 blocks going into this afternoon's ball game. Less than two a game. There you go. Beeman looking to pass. Last touch by Conley. According to Keith Batson, the official on the baseline. Hayes fouled by Turkoff before the shot. And we're going to get a couple free throws here for one of the Hayes sisters. Aislinn and Alicia. They got two other relatives with all A names also. But yeah. you know, the thing about it, they, they put a lot of pressure on you, Marshall, from so many different positions. And if you stand up and get out of your defensive stance, bam, they go right by you. Transfers from the SEC include the Hayes sisters along with Matthews. Formerly Egg Bowl combatants, now teammates. <laughs> I was wondering how to get how to get along with that. They were all at the same time. Here goes pressure. See, run the baseline. See when she was stationed here. Got it in okay. Got Harrison no explodes past multiple defenders, scores, and the foul. Uh, Elise Williams on the bench with two. Malaya Coles on the bench with two. Kaya take over time. She's been quiet, a little hesitant, a little jump hesitation right there. Gives her the angle and goes right to the basket. We've been trying to talk to her about getting the idea how far you can go. And you, the coaches have been talking about go, 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 get to a spot, pull up, take the jump, or that time you attack and get a free throw. Excellent free throw shooter converts a three point play. We're tied 28 apiece. Wake trail by as many as nine. That was a very good sequence for Wake Forest there. Entry feed poked away. Aislinn Hayes looking to drive on Andrews. Win for Andrews. Andrews did a nice job playing without fouling. Push your head. All alone, Katie Diebel missed another layup. Andrews unable to salvage it. Wake Forest with a third chance. Two brilliant opportunities to take the lead. Next play. If you Wake Forest there, next play. You got the ball and you got a game tied. Good job contesting that shot. Another rebound. Diebel for three. No. Deacons go 0 for 4, missing two layups and two threes. And all were good looks as well. Shot clock is off stand. Campbell guarded by Harrison. Both coaches shouting directions to their teams. Campbell tried to get around Conley. Kicks it. Mayer open. Three. Take away the screen and roll, kick back, shooter ready, knocks it down. Half Harrison, nine. think it was late, it goes, the official waves it off. They'll look, but I believe it was about two, three tenths of a second late. Yep, I think so as well. Him after today, Stan and I will be here on January the 4th to take on the team that was in the Final Four last year, the Virginia Tech Hokies. And the return of the move. <laughs> My goodness, you're even thinking like me right there. Make Couldn't even get it out. To the Joel. The return of the big O. Mayors three in and out, rebounded by Scruggs. More pressure. You can't leave her alone. That's good. Now attack. Williams, Euro. Nope. At least one for six. Coming off a one for 10 game on Sunday. 
Campbell turns it over. Harrison leads the break. Kaya Harrison puts it in. Attacking, attacking. really talk about it so much as broadcasters and coaches everybody the first four or five minutes of a half so very important I think in this ball game because you want to establish a tempo if you're if you're Marshall and watch Kaya Harrison again great defensive effort here gets the ball you've got the numbers a moment ago they had numbers didn't finish that way a little fake right there gets a defender on their heels and then she attacks and goes right to the glass nice little head and shoulder fake early to look away and then keep moving under control gets the basket Bad news for Megan Jebby. Amalia Coles just picked up her third foul. So 54 seconds into the second half. Malaya is back on the bench, replaced by Alyssa Andrews. Okay, now, now the mindset's got to be you continue to try to beat the pressure like you did, and instead of you maybe looking for the force inside 10 feet like you've had, the other players have got to be willing to make the little mid-range baseline shot, which is going to come from the weak side. So all those shots that you got in the paint when you were going inside, now they're going to be about eight feet further. But they're makeable. And Scruggs is back in the game, and she'll do a good job on the weak side rebound. Again, you these are the ways you stay in the game against pressure teams. Harrison inside Andrews. And Ruggs just picked up her third foul, 90 feet from the bucket. Credit to you, Sam. You talked about it early. How Marshall wears you down, and this is one of the ways they do it. Yeah, and, and you, you know, here we go. Oh, great Good defense. Block. Andrews rejects Matthews' effort. Harrison all the way ties us up 32 apiece. In the end, basketball by Andrews got the block on one end and then screamed out the defender and gave Harrison the lane to score, just like right now. Harrison pulls it out this time. Megan Jebby wants the Deeks to run the offense. Williams inside, turns, pivots, blocked by Scott. Beeman, teardrop. Andrews grabs her ninth rebound. A season high for her. And there are more to get. Andrews for the lead. Listen, Andrews has taken over that monster spot in the post. Dominating the one in with a block shot. Comes down, gets a nice put back. Cross court pass there. deflected by Andrews, whose activity is making a difference today, Stan. Her activity and her size. There's the block. Now watch the hustle. Sprints to the other end of the floor. That led to basket. And this time she's in position again. That's what you've got to do, not only against this team, but every team you play. That effort gets you wins. Hayes rejected. This time it's Conley saying no. Maybe Conley. Conley in the corner. On the drive, off balance, no good. Rebound taken by Marshall's Redmond. And the thundering herd quickly tie it back up. Brianna Campbell now with six points on her day. Wake Forest fatiguing. Jump ball. The arrow will give it back to the Deeks. But, I mean, we're sitting here courtside. You, you can feel like the level of exhaustion that this constant pressure puts upon you. Back and forth. Okay, transition. Here we go. Nice little move. Got to work hard to score. And immediately, there's no high five and no yelling. And everybody just gets into position and puts pressure on the ball. You force another turnover. But this time it's a spot throw in for Scruggs. She's got to understand it. So you get out of the corner. And there's the pressure. Ahead to Andrews. Back outside Diebel and Harrison. 
Williams back to the bench after a slow start to the second half. You don't want her to just mentally check out because she's frustrated not making easy baskets. You need her down the stretch. Tough catch, impressive save. It finds Conley, and she'll get to the free throw line. A lot of this stuff isn't how it was drawn up on the board. <laughs> okay. But some way, somehow, the fundamentals, grabbing the basketball, keeping the ball alive, playing hard, definitely can reward you. And it's done that the last couple of possessions, first with Andrews and now Reagan Conley going to the free throw line. Eighty percent at the line this season. Conley's got seven points and six rebounds. Don't want to jinx her, but I love her form. Watch, watch this shot. Knees bent, follow through, bam. Shot it a little quick. Just as soon as I brag on you, just about a split second on the release. But I love her technique at the line. Beeman kicks it. Ilderton sticks it. Just her third three of the season. She knocked one down in that game against Florida. Had a big one against Salem to kind of open that thing up before they went crazy. There's your trap. Dangerous pass. Gets to Harrison. Into the forecourt. Andrews hesitated on the attack and pulls it back out. Diebel for three. Yes! That's a great job by Andrews. She didn't try to force it. Got the ball back in the middle. It's reverse. You've got a shooter. But we say on the weak side, there's going to be a shot. Andy Diebel's been struggling shooting the ball most of the season, but that's a good open look, buried with confidence, and an offensive foul called on Mahogany Matthews going back Wake's way. Good decision. Watch the ball. There's a reverse. Diebel was one out of 15 in her last six ball games from the three line. That came in a good time. Santa Claus came early. Hey, three. Takes three for six from beyond the arc. But you're able to get that basket because Andrews didn't feel comfortable about trying to take it to the hole, took her time, and because the ball was reversed, the shot's going to be there. You beat the pressure, you beat it on the second side. Pass had no chance. Mays for two. They are so quick. I haven't seen a team this year that's able to just change it, just turn it on from offense to defense, back to offense. There's your pressure. Harrison through the defense, lays it in. Best way to attack it is to go right at it. Great job by Kaya Harrison. Nine for Kaya. Deeks back up one as we go back and forth on the odd number. Hayes, yeah. Remember all those shots that Marshall had in the paint early that they weren't making. They're beginning to make those. And again, that just puts more pressure on Wake Forest. Not the foul. Handle the pressure. First field goal for Aislinn Hayes. Conley, errant pass. Jordan couldn't handle it. Mayer beats everybody down the floor. And it ran you down. Run the baseline. Run the baseline. Timeout, Wake Forest. Good timeout. Kim Caldwell's team now leads by 3 4 11 to play in the third. And Marshall getting what they want in transition here on the road. Timeout, Deeks. Well, the Wake Forest students on holiday break. It's members of the Carver High School Pet Band providing the energy here at the Joel. They had a great rendition of the national anthem pregame, and they are bringing the energy to the proceedings. Wake Forest. Needs a boost of energy, a little caffeine perhaps. Yellow Jackets, long-time coach Alfred Poe. Poe's a legend in Winston-Salem. Good athletic program over Carver. Man, too. Wake down by three. Last couple buckets have gone to Marshall. Some more trapping pressure to top right now. Good reversal. Scruggs caught it in a great spot, but never looked to shoot. Harrison forced to fire, missed the three. Scruggs in a rebound. Seventh rebound for Scruggs in limited time today because of the fouls. Turkoff with 10. Short corners are going to be available. Tough catch. Turkoff to the corner. Fires and hits. There you go. 
That's how they drew it up, right? And so, you know it. Well, she kept moving, and she was ready to shoot. That ball was deflected. Okay. Out, that is a violation. Well, Deacons hit the three, tie it up. We get ourselves another timeout. Three. Tight game here at the Joel, Marshall, and Wake Forest. 43 apiece, fourth ever meeting between these two schools in women's hoops. It's the first meeting in 20 years. These two teams should play more often. Although I don't know if Megan Jebbia will agree. <laughs> Not far. Not a, not a bad ride. 20, 21 turnovers? That's right? number 20. And counting. Still third quarter. Beeman gives it up. Hayes to the bucket. Marshall leads again. Well, they forced 42 turnovers against Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, I think uh, 20 might be safe. Ooh. See, but you, you, you can't, it goes against basketball, but you can't pick your dribble up against your trap at the, at the Wake Forest. Because all you're doing is slowing yourself down. You've got to at least try to attack that, even if you kick it out like Andrew did a moment ago. Scruggs wakes now missed seven, eight layups today. Aislinn Hayes again off the dribble. This time comes up short. Andrews now with 10 rebounds on her day. Turkoff one on two. Oh, gives it up to the nice cutting Scruggs. Creating a little space and putting it home. And that's exactly what she did, Evan, using the left hand on the left side. Just kind of found her way, got her balance, and elevates and scores and knocks it down, and there we go. First foul on Diebel. I, I, you know, I... This the, the third line or the fourth line for Marshall? Fourth line, it keeps going, it keeps going. But I wouldn't be shocked to see Wake maybe go to some zone. They've got to protect some players. That's a good defensive play by Elise Williams with the deflection. You're picking up some fouls, and there's still a lot of time to play. There's a lot of pressure. And, and you know, you got Kyle's has got three, Strokes has got three. The designated spot. And then I'm out the taken. defense by Marshall. Well, that's going to leave Megan Jebby with two timeouts left. Diggs want this to just be a 30, so we'll stay right here. Something that, you know, casually you take for granted, that being an inbound situation. And that's why every time against a pressure team, you've got to be alert to situation. That was a designated spot. And you've got to get the ball out of bounds and try to look down the floor quickly to try to beat traps. And, you know, just a little casual, you get the pressure, you get the pressure, you have to use a timeout. Timeouts are very valuable, always, especially a game like this. You think Kim Caldwell's system, the style of play would work in a power conference? Yeah. yeah. Why haven't we seen one? Uh, you don't have you don't have the players. Yeah. But you think you think about what what is South Carolina? They've been pressuring you all the way. What's UConn? What did UConn do all those times? Yeah, they, they pressure me yeah. Just different ways you do that, but you're still forcing tempo. You're still putting pressure on people. First foul on Campbell, third foul on the herd here in the third quarter. They've done a better job defending without fouling here in the second half so far. Trap in the middle. Reverse it. Turkoff takes it. Tied at 45. Sidney Scott. Rebounded by Harrison. Final minute here in this third period. Harrison to Williams. Elise slow to get up, and now Marshall takes a timeout. Marshall still had four timeouts left, so they'll have three remaining after this one. 
54 seconds left in this third quarter. Sometimes, you know, so how you miss a layup? Sometimes it's the angle. That was an odd angle for Williams to finish that play. Well, Sunday, December 31st, ACC Network Women's Basketball. Conference play really revs into full gear. The Deeks and the Seminoles, and Notre Dame, Syracuse, Louisville, Miami. That's a really good game. And then NC State still have not lost yet this season. Coach Westmore, I'll be in Charlottesville, 6 p.m. on New Year's Eve. Oh, and a uh, related story about NC State. You, you girl, Diamond Johnson, took the floor last week against Auburn. She's at Norfolk State. Yeah. So she, she got on the court. So you, know, you, you were waiting to find out. They couldn't tell her. Marshall back on top. Friendly bounce on the jumper, and Beeman now at six points. Beeman never seems to rush. She's not scored like we talked about earlier, but she just continues to just keep playing. Turkoff inside, Andrews, no. Andrews gets the rebound, missed it again. Hits the ground hard, the foul is on Marshall. It'll be wake ball underneath. Love it. Absolutely loving the effort by Andrews. Sydney Scott just picked up her fourth foul. She goes to the bench. Throw over the top of the pressure. You've got numbers. Get you a good angle. Make the decision. Got to finish it. But she didn't give up on the play. Final seconds of the third. Wake down by two. Williams looking to back down Campbell. Circles the wagons. Turkoff for the lead. Short. Scruggs. Unable to get it back up, and a little extracurricular frustration ring heard at Southern Miss and South Alabama and Arkansas State at home. Trips to Atlanta and Conway, South Carolina to follow that. But first, a fourth quarter here in Winston-Salem. Marshall looking for its second win over a Power 5 opponent this year. Wake Forest trying to hold off this Marshall team here at the Joel. Wrong rebound, Campbell. Oh, that looked like a drag of the pivot foot, but it was excellent footwork as it turned out, and Campbell scores to double the lead. Going into the quarter, Marshall was 18 of 50 shooting the basketball, but they're being out rebounded by Wake by 10. The, the, the formula, that's the formula right there for Wake Forest. They've taken 42 shots now. They've made 19, so they're even with that. They cannot turn the basketball over, Evan. They cannot turn the ball over. Just a second field goal for Elise Williams. And maybe that gets her going. This layup for Mayer, and here comes Harrison the other way. Deacons with numbers. Gonna just stay Wake Forest ball. See, and that's the case where Harrison's got that hard angle there. She's got to either pull up or try to kiss it off the glass. Wake has had a lot of success with inbounds under this year. See if they can get one now. Bad pass by Turkoff, easily stolen by Mays. To Hayes. Rebound tipped around. The foul is on Wake. Number two on Kaya Harrison. It's about the second or third time today where that, this bad timing, you know, the ball kicks the rim and hangs on there just a second. Got a chance to get a rebound. Harrison would have picked up the foul. Now, they actually gave it to Williams, Dan. That's my they bad. Gave, they gave it. So Elise with three, Kaya just with one. Good defense there. Harrison got the loose ball. Gets a screen from Scruggs. She's off to the races. Turkoff going baseline. Missed it. Strong loose ball rebound pulled in by Redmond. Five second call. No. What was the call? Five. Foul. Foul. She got a hand on her. 
Well, it goes against Turkov, yeah. apparently. Oh, yeah. And she was putting her hand down. And why did she signal five? Like, if you got, you got how many fingers in the, in the thumb? You can ask the hand. <laughs> so you put your hand out. So she could have been saying stop. In the name of love? I mean, what, 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 are, we, what are we doing here? She put her. <laughs> Happy holidays. Boy, I'm, I'm, I'll miss you for three, four days. Miss <laughs> this. Put her hand out. In the I saw, same motion. I saw the and you pump saw and you saw the, the pump. You saw it, so you thought it was five, right? Well, I didn't think it was a five second, but I thought that's what the signal was. Anyway, moving Still on. Matter. Moving on. Next play. <laughs> Next play. Deeks fouled in the backcourt. First team foul on Marshall. That's Beeman second. Two members of the herd with four personals, Scott and Matthews. Four different Deacons with three. Coles, Williams, Turkoff, and Scruggs. Something that just steps out to you considering all the points that Marshall scored this year. Beginning the fourth quarter, they were five of 17 from three land. A lot of the way they put pressure on you is because they're able to knock down threes. You go down and get a two, they knock another three down. Beautiful nice pass. Coles finishes. Nice. I mean, Coles, that was her first field goal attempt for the second half. She's four for four from the field in the game. Corner three, Abby Beeman with a dagger. Push it down. You score. You're happy. You push it down. Find your spots. Beeman knocks down the bottom. Nine for Beeman. Marshall back up three as we tick towards seven minutes left. And you got to love the discipline that you're seeing out of this Wake Forest team. Yes, they've had a lot of turnovers. That was to be expected playing this Marshall team. But the discipline to pull it out and try to run their good half-court sets. Clock winding down. Conley gets it out. Harrison's going to need to fire. Gets it to go. Beating the buzzer, Kaya Harrison. Get to the middle of the lane. Get it up. You knew how much time was there. Very smart play by the grad senior. First Deacon in double figures, Harrison. But Abby Beeman is heating up, staying here in the fourth. I'm trying to tell you. She had five. She likes North Carolina. She had five against Elon Sunday afternoon. I mean, five threes. Five threes, that's it. That's a hand. Harrison gets it across the timeline. Williams wanted to get it into Coles, but a three-second count is going to give it back to Marshall. Man, Coles just got kind of caught up with Beeman, just kind of battling for position and lost track of where she was on the floor. Jeffy did, did not like the call, yeah. continuing to discuss it. Looks like more of a one-sided conversation with her and Keith Batson. <laughs> He's got the whistle. He doesn't need to respond. <laughs> there, there, there you go. CC Mays puts it on the floor. She had it working inside and coming across the court, so the wings are going to be there. Back to Beeman. She's hit threes the last couple trips down the floor. Oh, what a tough pass. Tougher catch. Tudor unable to convert the tough two in the foul on Mays as Harrison collects the loose ball. I mean, you're exactly right. Beeman put the ball exactly where it needed to be. If you just continue to move, you're going to get a layup. Leads to some belt and assist us, Beeman. But that was a very nice pass, and unfortunately for Marshall, not able to finish it out with a basket. And ultimately pick up the foul. Game's been within single digits the whole way. Wake's largest lead was four in the opening minutes. Marshall led by as many as nine. Wake has hung around. The three and eight Deeks looking ahead to the holiday break with a happy home win. Reagan Conley, a lot of contact, and she'll get two free throws with 5.15 to go. A nice job by Marshall to run Conley off the three line, make her put it to the floor. It was that on Tudor, I think it was. 
Brandon Campbell. Was that one too? Yeah, that's her fourth, and she got there just a little bit too late. Third member of the Thundering Herd with four personals. Big free throws here for Conley. Deeks have struggled at the line, just five for 10 today. Reagan's now three for five at the stripe. Eight points, six rebounds. Finish high, follow through. Bam. Yep. Yeah. He said, look, gooseneck. He was taught well at an early age. Back to a two point game. Campbell, tough shot. Rebound off the floor, controlled by Katie Diebel. Ahead for Conley. And Scruggs was fouled by Campbell away from the ball. It'll be Wake Ball on the side. Out of the timeout, 4.51 to play. Two point game here in Winston. She's got the full arsenal as far as shooting goes. Great rhythm, great range, drive there, little crossover, feet are set, finishes high and falls through. Not a lot you can do defensive-wise. She's had a solid basketball game, and now in this final 451, look for her to try to really explode and dominate the final minutes. Outcome very much hanging in the balance here at the Joel Coliseum. Williams. The shot clock down to five. She recognizes. Elise able to clang it off the iron, but not much more. And the foul's going on Scruggs, and she's got four. She had everything going her way, did Elise, and just kind of got bumped just a little bit as she was in the motion and shot. And that got her off balance, and everything kind of went downhill after that. And that's Scruggs' fourth. But I think you got a player. I think you got a player right now. You got to play this game and win it. Beaming on the drive. Deflected out of bounds by Wake Forest. It'll be Marshall Ball. After the Elon game, Kim Caldwell said she thought her team is trending in the right direction. They've won four in a row. They're six and four on the season. Wake has not allowed Marshall to spread their wings with their legs on them. That's a turnover. Yeah, Demon just pressure. dribbled it out of bounds. Well, nice job there by Scruggs to continue to work and work and coach to the baseline and not let her get out of there. This is a spot throw in. Mm. Conley has it taken away by Mayer. Aislinn Hayes, no. Scruggs with her 10th rebound. Williams. Jockeying on her way down the floor, bumped by Mayer. That'll be free throws for Wake Forest. You have a feeling that Scruggs, the way she's been playing the last couple of ball games, can have a nice night on the glass. If she gets offensive rebounds and converts, then that really helps his Wake Forest team. She's playing with four fouls, she's got 10 rebounds a season high, along with Andrews. But now you've got to be able to make some free throws like that if you're Wake Forest. And understand there's going to be long shots taken by this Marshall Club. How do you get those rebounds? And what do you do with the ball when you get it? And here we go. One for two for the junior from Raleigh. It's at a one point game, under four minutes to play. Huge possession, Evan. Everyone from here on out will be. Well, this one is special. Extend the lead for Marshall. They put pressure. You stop. Wade's got a chance to lead. Good Great time. defense. Williams knocks it away. Ahead to Harrison. Pivoting. On the offensive glass, it's Conley and Wake Forest back in front. The long arms of Reagan Conley. Great defensive play by Elise Williams. Takes it down. Second chance opportunity. Gives Wake the lead. Conley, the second team in double figures. Beeman blocked again. Williams the block, but on the second effort, Campbell fouled by Kaya Harrison. 
And free throws for Marshall. Watching Lee Williams goes up, contests, goes after the basketball. Struggles alertly, just pushes ahead. That's Kaya go. Kaya can't make the play there. But Conley's long arms and reverse layup count the basket. Let's go the other way. Talked about it earlier, Stan. This Wake Forest team not known for its block shots, but that's six yeah. in the game today. He came in with 21 blocks on the season. The thing that was so impressive about that was the shot was blocked to keep it in play, and Scruggs was alert to push ahead. She didn't mess around trying to put it on the floor or anything like that. Round and out for Brianna Campbell. One more free throw. This is a Campbell team that shoots, excuse me, a, a Marshall team that shoots 73% on the season. Gets the bounce on the second. We're tied at 56. That free throw snaps a three minute, 19 second scoring drought for the herd. And does it surprise you that Marshall's gonna throw a little full court pressure here for a change of pace? Shocking. Wake has gotten accustomed to it there. They're handling it well. See, take it around the weak side. Nice job by Will. Pass. Exactly. Pass. Yeah. And so you've got a lot of time. This plays in the Wake's hands now. Under three minutes. Both teams in the bonus. Any foul the rest of the way. Mid-range shot will be there. Williams long two goes. They call it a three on the floor. And they're going to review it now. I thought her feet were on the line, but we'll see what the review yields. A nice job here. The ball moves. She steps back. Oh, that's a three. That's a th yeah. Carla Fountain's right. I'm wrong. Let's see. You've been wrong a lot today. What's wrong with you? Okay. It's early. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm not accustomed to you. Being wrong and being even more admitting it. Wow, this is the new Evan Leffler, isn't it? Got the nice sweater on, you know, got the little, you know, Thurston Howell the third look here. Like this. <laughs> look at you. Look at this. Anyway, is that a, count the basket. Is that a Gilligan's Island character? It was. Mr. Belvedere. You're just naming characters I just, in the I'm, 60s I'm, right now? I'm, just, that I'm just rolling on. I got good cable. I was up late the other day watching it. <laughs> TV Land is on TV. all the time. Hey, it's that's fantastic. It. There you go. There you go. Wake by three after the review. Beam in. Travel. Travel before the shot. Wake ball. <laughs> hey. Wake Forest has done an excellent job. Defending the drive and contesting shots, especially in the second half. And we said a moment ago how important that possession was. Wake didn't score off it initially, but they get the basket by Conley. Oh, whoa. That's off offensive foul yeah. called against Diebel. <laughs> Got his money's worth. <laughs> Take a look. Watch this. A little acting in there, too. A little acting. A little more, bit. More than a little. Good job by Deeble getting that passing lane there, denying Campbell. Oh, great defense. Deeble takes it away, making amends. And Harrison. Make it Williams will get to the free throw line for Wake Forest with 2.08 on the clock. Wake has done a nice job, as you've already alluded to a couple of times, about blocking shots. But the reason why, they're getting the guards of Marshall to get in the paint. And instead of leaping, they're keeping their hands up. And you got small guards. Remember we were talking about a couple of games ago about guards, players bringing the ball low to high? You don't have to do anything. And, and that's, that's a good effort defensively and good defensive discipline, not to foul. One for two at the line for Williams, and the Deeks match their largest lead of the day. The 
try to run a little cutter here. Campbell gives it up. Aislinn Hayes for three. Yeah. Harrison did a nice job. They were looking for Matthews. Couldn't get it to her. Aislinn Hayes knocks down the huge three. Eighth three of the game for Marshall. Back to a one-point game. 100 seconds left. Dable, that's a long two. If it goes, it does not. The rebound battled for. The arrow belongs to Wake, and the jump ball will keep it at this end. Love the idea of Dable taking the shot. No hesitation. She's in her range, but you miss it, and then everybody's diving after a loose ball, trying to find a way to get a W. I love the hustle by Wake Forest. Able to trigger the inbound. Williams up high. Coles down low. Pivoting through the traffic. Count the bucket and the foul. Malaya Coles. Every time she gets the ball in that spot, good things seem to happen. Well, and everybody knew that she was going to make the drop step, but somehow she's able to power this through. There's a drop. The defender's late was there, and she says, the heck with you. I'm going to the glass. Watch this. Double, maybe three people around, and some ways able to get it up, and that is a big basket for Wake. Coles five for five from the floor, but she's 0 for two so far at the line, and this is a big one to try to make it a four-point game. Fifth double-figure ball game of the season. She comes through and knocks it down. Now, good move now. You can go offense for defense if you need to for Wake Forest, bringing Andrews in. She's been alive defensively. Deeks by four. Guard the three line first. And if you're Marshall, don't, don't panic. Get a shot. Beeman got to her spot but missed the shot. Scruggs, outlets for Harrison. Pressure's coming. And Wake gets it across, and Williams will go to the line. You have to be lucky sometimes, <laughs> okay? Yeah, any way you can to win a basketball game. Pima did a nice job maneuvering the defense, got in the paint. When she jump stops, she just found herself a little too close to the basket, believe it or not. It had no room or airspace to get it off. With a minute to go, Williams sinks the first. Nice job by Scruggs not to pick up the fifth foul. Two for two, stretches the lead to six. Under a minute. Mayer trying to cut the deficit in half, can't do it. Saved by Beeman and a timeout called by Kim Caldwell. She may regret that timeout call because Campbell was about to have a wide open look. Brianna Campbell, 50% from three so far this season. Now they try to drop a play to get her as good of a look as the one she would have yeah, had. Yeah, she had a good look, but there wasn't anybody to cover it if she didn't make it. So, you know, she's the third best three point shooter by number on this team coming in with 11. So, okay, you got the ball in her hand, run a set. Still plenty of time if you're Marshall to, to score, get a stop, put Wake Forest in the free throw line. And Wake's got 22 turnovers a day. So there's always a possibility after a make the pressure them that they may turn the basketball over. So, you know, you, you, know, you never know. But they've got the ball. They've got timeouts. So see what they run here. Some way, somehow, you know, you're gonna some kind of influence with Beeman. And you gotta give Wake another good job defensively, but only eight turnovers in the second half of this game. Here we go. 16 in the first. Yes. All right, Marshall need points. Hayes, tough shot, won't go. Rebound knocked away from Matthews. Elise Williams has it. And she's fouled in the backcourt by Ace Lynn Hayes. Wake is some made free throws away from getting a really nice win, arguably their best win of the year.
against a Marshall team that had won four in a row and beat Florida. That's won some road games this year. And the Deeks have maintained their poise down the stretch here this afternoon. I and didn't think game planning this that if Wake had 22 turnovers that they may would be able to win this basketball game. They had 21 in a, in a close loss to Davidson. But what I did not anticipate was that they would pressure Marshall in their rhythm shots. And Marshall only, what, eight three-point baskets made so far? Eight, eight of 20, what, eight of 23, eight of 22? Eight, eight, 23, eight 30, of 23, 35 percent. Yeah, yeah. They've done a really good job taking away the explosive plays for the Thundering Herd. Williams made the first, or excuse me, missed the first, makes the second. Does make it a three-possession game and a timeout taken by Kim Caldwell. For the Demon Deacons, ACC play from here on out. Noon tip-off against Florida State. It's a 6 p.m. game against Virginia Tech. Then the Sunday 2 p.m. game against Miami. And that Syracuse game is 11.30 a.m. on a Thursday. Yep. Three ranked teams among the first five, and Miami was undefeated. They were ranked up until last week when they lost to, to a really good Baylor team away from home. So, I mean, yeah, I'm not stating the obvious here. This was a needed win for Wake Forest. <laughs> you know? Not over yet. True. Beam into the corner. Mayer for three. Marshall on the glass. And a tie-up, and it'll stay with the herd. Even with that offensive rebound for Marshall, the Deeks are plus 15 on the backboard yeah. today, Stan. Yeah. That's, that's an outstanding job by Wake Forest. 12 rebounds for Scruggs, 10 for Andrews off the bench, 7 for Reagan Conley. This is from a team that's 15th in the conference in rebounding. Comes in with a negative 6.1 on the glass. So to the job that they've done against a team that loves to take jump shots, you gotta give them a lot, uh, you gotta give them a lot of credit today. That should just about do it. Missed free three in the timeout to advance the ball. Wake was down 55-51. Since then, it's a 15-4 run, kind of the opposite of what happened on Sunday up against Georgetown. And the Hoyas closed the game with 15 straight points and went by 16. Final score was not an indication of how the game went. Yeah. So said Megan Jebby. And Got to imagine Kim Caldwell might feel similarly today, but the most important part, arguably, of the 40 minutes of the last five, and the Deeks have been the better team in these last five minutes. In those close games, Marshall's been able to pull out because they wear you down some way, somehow. Wake Forest found a second win in the final quarter of this ball game. They're going to run the clock. Does not look like Marshall's going to foul. For Megan Jebby is Demon Deacons. Tough start to the season, but they will head into the holiday break with a satisfying 66-59 win over the Marshall Thundering Herd. The Herd's four-game winning streak is no more.